Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back to episode 23 of the Sharpshooters Podcast. I'm your humble and gracious host, Mr. Bresky Sharp on the ones and twos. Thank you for everybody uh, for subscribing to the channel and showing love to the show because finally we hit 400 subs. We in the building with 400 subs starting in late August and we had 400 subs. So appreciate everybody that keeps supporting the show. We on the road to 500 now. So appreciate y'all. Keep uh, liking, commenting, subscribing, and sharing the channel. Appreciate y'all. We got a packed show tonight. And you know I got my guys in the building. We just missing one. Look at them. Ladies and gentlemen, look at the people. It's the man, Mr. QG. Mr. GQ Smooth himself, ladies and gentlemen. The Kappa man. <laughs> All the ladies love. <laughs> what up, player? What's happening? What's happening? Mm -hmm. Everything Gucci? Already. And, and ladies and gentlemen, this man got a got a got a got a good job, ladies and gentlemen. The man got a good job. Oh, wait a minute. Is that Atlanta Braves? jersey he have on ladies and gentlemen wait a minute ladies and gentlemen i want you to give a big congratulations to now a part of the atlanta braves organization mr the haven more ladies and gentlemen congratulations my brother oh man you on mute man there you go yeah man, there you go you good? you good yeah man i'm here man i'm here yeah you know Shout out to the Braves, man. Cutting the checks now, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, we been good, man. Eight times, yeah. man. ATL. Yeah, you ain't going to say too much. We, we want the man to keep the job. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but, keep the job, man. Shoot, man. That, that boy, moving on up, ladies and gentlemen. And like I like to say, the price just went up. The price just went up. And for you haters, we laughing at you. Because... That boy got a job. <laughs> a good job. Because he's a good man, Savannah. Shit, my good man. Man. <laughs> my <laughs> man. Literally. It's only the beginning, man. So, yeah, yeah shout out to you. Then we're going to go ahead and get this show started. Man, we're going to talk about this a little briefly. Oh, uh, my man, Killer Mike. Rap album of the year, ladies and gentlemen. You already know. I've been trying to tell them. Now, the one thing I, I do want to uh, tell for real, I can care less about the Grammys. I think the Grammys is highly uh, overrated or whatnot. But I knew this album was rap album of the year. It wasn't even close. The first time I heard it, especially being a... Uh, a black man at my age now, I like it. Would be so many dudes that relate to it in so many ways, but I just want to give a special shout out to one of my favorite favorite rappers. And I'm going to interview one day one of my bucket list interviews, Mr. Killer Mike. Man, turn up, clean, sweet, gentleman, sweet. Every category he was in, he got the award. So that lets you know how special that album is. If you haven't heard it, please go listen to it. I just wanted to show love to the man, uh, a town legend, and he only and he's just forty eight years old. So that lets you know, better late than never, ladies and gentlemen. Forty eight years old, winning rap album of the year. Yep. Yeah. What y'all got for me? I mean, you've been called it, bro. You've been saying this for months now, man. You've been saying it. You know, I, I ain't gonna lie. I thought her loss or Utopia was going, you know, do they thug with it. Hurts me to see my boy uh, Travis go out like that. You know what I'm saying? But hey, it's all good. It's all love, man. Yeah, I, Can't be I, mad at you right. My bad. I was about to say, yeah, and I, and I mess with Travis. Or what not, man. It'd be certain years, dog. When it be the uh, awards and it just like, what was that year? Uh, it was rap album and Macklemore won best rap album. Twenty fourteen, yeah. and 
and Kendra Lamar. Uh, I forgot. Yeah, I think that was his, not that wasn't his debut album, but it was like his second album. Like I thought it was though. I don't. I no. Nah, Kendra Lamar been like a uh, artist long before that. Yeah, going out before that. Yeah, because you're right. He had uh, one other album. That was like his second album. Yeah, but I thought yeah. it was his first too. Well, uh, one of my partners, a uh, big Kendra Lamar fan, told me like, "No, nah, that's like his second or whatever." Well, it wasn't Good Kid, Mad City. No, nah, that that what it was. Oh, okay. So, so he that. has he had something before that. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah but the simple fact that Macklemore won over that, see, it that's why I don't care about like album sales and then like that. Like, bro, when you turn this on, what does that tell you? <laughs> it's just like a good movie. What not like um uh, hey I think everybody on here seen Shawshank Redemption, yeah. Oh, uh, for the most part, like but that same year you have Forrest Gump, and I'm I'm willing to debate in a lot of ways, like Shawshank is pretty much up there with Forrest Gump, but Forrest Gump just swept the uh Oscars that year for everything that it was in. So oh, that's what I'm saying. It ain't necessarily got to be sales or whatnot. You know, a good movie and a good album, it ain't necessarily got to be sales. I've seen trash albums have high sales. They thought it was going to be something, and then it was just trash. Right. But, Gwen, what you got to say about it before we move on? My fault. I ain't gonna lie. You just you really just put me on Killer Mike, man. I, mm-hmm. I, I, I like some of it. Yeah, I wouldn't call him my favorite rapper, but I, I like so much. I mean, it's a huge controversy about you know the Travis Scott and uh, <laughs> Killer Mike, but hey, it is what it is. I mean, he they voted for. I don't know who the voters was, but they voted for. <laughs> hey man, trust me, it ain't it ain't a. I don't know, man. I, I probably would have been disappointed if anybody else won the award because I just know how like great that album is, bro. Like it's top tier, dog, and it's gonna stand the test of time. Travis got a good album. I don't think it's gonna stand the test of time like Killer Mike's stuff is, bro. But we'll see, man. Only time will tell. Yeah, that's where we live. But that's why I say I love. My favorite artist, one of my favorite artists, Nas dropped his, and I was just like, "This is how I know I love Killer Mike album because I love Nas album." Well, but you, and, you, and Killer Mike was just destroying them too. I was like, "Man, it is he separated himself this year, man." That that was just the album. But yeah. shout out to Killer. One day you're gonna be on the Sharpshooters podcast. Clip it. You heard it here first, ladies and gentlemen. And then when you see him, remember what I told you. But y'all already know what time it is. It's (laughs) Super Bowl week. Oh, man. It's good old Super Bowl week. Super Bowl 58 in Las Vegas. You know, we got a big game. We got Patty Mahomes gets Brock Purdy. Got Andy Reid. Going against uh Kyle Shanahan, man. We just got we got we got a heavyweight bout right here. We got some dogs. There's some dogs out there, man. We got some a good dogs. we got good offense. Well, I don't believe KC uh offense is uh top tier like it being, but it's still like good. Like yeah, previous, but yeah. but it's still but it's still good. They they but what a lot of folks keep sleeping on is their defense. Is <laughs> Mm-hmm. That's what's saving them in a lot of these games. In a lot of these games, but that's what you need, man. If you want uh, to win a Super Bowl, you want to be hot at the right time. You want to be hot. If one thing is bad, you want the other thing to be top Wait. tip. <laughs> I swear. I swear. Yeah. So, man, uh, we're gonna talk about who's gonna win the game or whatnot, but. Who are who are some of y'all uh S factors for the uh game? I mean, to be honest, it's only it's the doc, it's the head head people what in charge. You, you, you got Pat yeah. Mahomes on one side, who was now, like, oh, well, well, I'm talking about. Oh, okay, we got we got to make it similar for y'all because I don't like how y'all going to the quarterback outside of the quarterbacks. Who y'all picking as y'all S factors? I, I think Rasheed Rice is gonna make a difference for that offense. 
I like mm-hmm. Rice, Kelsey for sure. Isaiah Pancheco is running like running like, like a man. like a dog, bro. Like his dog, people man. get tired, bro. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, he he he's something different, man. He, right. He running with a purpose. I say yeah. that much. I really like Pancheco. I did not like him at the beginning of the year, bro. Like I don't know if Casey. Oh boy, you sleep. Plan, I, I just don't know if the game plan, they weren't running them enough. You know what I'm yeah. saying? It, it's not that I didn't like him, but I didn't like how, dude, I remember the, one of the first two games, bro, they was just throwing, throwing, yeah. throwing, throwing, throwing. They wasn't relying on their running game. It's like they ain't trust them boys. Man, I like Pacheco, they, too. Yeah, once they let Pacheco yeah. uh, break out of his shell, yeah. man, that boy been a beast. Hey. For real. And hey, he runs like he's angry. I ain't yeah. gonna lie, he runs like he's angry, and I love that. Mm-hmm. But yeah, shoot, I I can't even lie, man. Christian McCaffrey on the other side is gonna be a be an X factor for them too. For sure, for the Forty Niners, because that boy, hey, that boy got a dog is a dog, man. And shoot, if they if the defense stops stops Christian, then we might see a whole different a whole different game. But if they don't, if they don't touch that boy, it's gonna be ugly. <laughs> ugly, but shoot, I think another X factor and a lot. I'm not, I'm not gonna say a lot of people sleep on him because he's one of the greatest. Uh, but uh, Kittle, Kittle is gonna be an X factor for the 49ers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely, George Kittle. Because yeah. when he catches the ball, it's hard for you to tackle this man. And I think in a lot of ways, man, you got to name uh, some uh, great players, especially I like Rice. I think Rice is a good player for him with uh, Pat. And in a lot of ways, Kelsey is definitely that safety blanket. If Kelsey wasn't there, I don't think they'd get to this many Super Bowls, to be nah. honest, <laughs> if we being yeah. quite honest. Yeah. But – so it's good that uh, he's healthy. But one of the guys I think that is super important, and I think this two-week layoff is very important so he can get, like, fully healthy, is uh, Debo Samuels easily. Because he's going to be a big, him. big, big part for uh, Brock Purdy in a lot, a lot of ways. And I believe with him just being so strong, and you can use him as a um, – as a running back or whatever, you can just use him in so many uh different ways. I think Debo is a very, very important piece, and I yeah. think he's gonna uh uh do something big on the game. So more than likely they're gonna have less need on him. So yeah, that's gonna and Brandon Ayuk is definitely gonna be a factor because I love the way he uh like his he, game just just rose this year. Yeah, it, it kind of developed this year too. His game has developed. Than, pre- than previous years, but overall, the the wide receivers don't really have that impact like they used to. Uh, but hey, they made it to the Super Bowl, and yeah. like you said, man, that true defense win championships. So yeah, they, they defense kind of kind of helped them out. That's yeah. who that's what I'm gonna say is an X factor too. Jones, you know, Jones is an X factor because if he if he if he get the Brock Purdy. It's mm-hmm. over. Yeah. If he gets burned, it's over. I'm gonna tell you who's not an X Factor. Kadarius Tony. <laughs> Man, stop doing hey, it'd be crazy that, if man. he is though. It'd be crazy if he was. He man. helped him win a Super Bowl him. last year. I don't even see that man really getting that many touches in the Super Bowl this year. I'm just saying, what if what if he does, bro? You, you he see what he said last on that year. podcast, or not podcast on that Instagram live going off on them folks. Yeah, I seen it. Yeah, you, you ain't you ain't making you ain't making it back. My fault. No, I said my fault. He was saying a lot of vulgar stuff, man, about the team and just tripping. Oh yeah, but I was like, man, yeah, you ain't helping your case when you uh say stuff like that. But I know he's a a, a difference maker, especially right with his uh speed or whatnot. He just had a bad year, man. He just yeah. you know that. I, I believe he's telling me. You have a bad year and the best game in your life. It so, happened, it happened last talk. year. <laughs> Look what he talk. did in the Super Bowl. Right, right. So yeah, all it takes is one game. You just 
I don't I don't care what you've been doing all year. This is the game. <laughs> you want to play your it's, best. It's yeah, you right want to put your best product on the field, man. And that man been dropping so many passes, bro. That nigga about to put glue in his hand. <laughs> put, <laughs> that, <laughs> man. put that stick him, man. That stick him on there. Yeah, yeah. By any means necessary, I'm getting you soup on me. <laughs> but yeah, man, it, it's, it's going to be a pretty good game, man. I'm, I can't wait for it, dog. So we're going to see what it's talking about. But shoot, y'all, y'all are already. Well, I'll probably talk about uh, defense. But I believe the really big part before we go to the predictions, I think the uh one of the main parts of this game is going to be that defense. Which defense is going to break? Uh, of course the uh 49ers got. I feel like the 49ers have the best linebacker and course and uh defensive line with uh Bosa Chase and Fred Warner and um Ken Law. Uh, well, I think it's Ken Law. I always get his last name uh, wrong. But um, all them boys, so that's going to make a big difference. And who's going to uh, cover uh, Travis Kelsey in a lot of ways? So we're going to see, man. They, but they, the thing about it is, man, yeah, it's going to come to defense, man, but. They got such strong offenses. I think this is gonna be a, end up being a high scoring game, but I think I think it's gonna come down to that last quarter of who defense is better. You think gonna be high scoring? I really think it's gonna be high scoring. Mm-hmm. I, can't be high scoring. I can't wait to hear the prediction. I was like high scoring. My antennas went on like. Whoop. Yeah, I, I feel it. I feel it though, man. But oh, shoot, man. I think it's gonna be high scoring. Hmm. I don't know, man. We gonna see. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's gonna be a tight, tight game, bro. I, I just want to see what your high score is gonna be. So you know what? Let's let's man, let's get down to the nitty gritty or right. whatnot. And so for the last football game, I did terrible all year on, but uh, just keeping up because certain. Uh, we will do our picks, but the people that's on the show, and I know some people uh that couldn't make it there sitting their pits, and so now I lost those. So we're gonna do it like this since it's the last one of the year. <laughs> if your prediction is an L, three shots, mm. three shots. Of Everclear. Nah, we ain't doing it. Nah, I'm just, I'm just talking, man. I'm just talking. I'm just, <laughs> no, no, I only, only added that part because you said, uh, oh, man, that ain't bad. Okay. Everclear. Who, <laughs> said that, who said that ain't bad? You did. You said nah. three shots ain't bad. Oh, yeah, three shots ain't bad. Yeah, that's why I said I added the Everclear part because I heard that part. <laughs> oh, like, oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Hell no. Nah. Yeah, that's the same proof. Thirty percent. You know what? Hey, hey Everclear. Yeah, hey, Everclear like a hundred percent, hundred proof, hundred proof. Mm-hmm. It's terrible. That's horrible. <laughs> no, man. About big. No, man. No, man. Before we do that, man. I don't know. We got to get that right. <laughs> Everclear is hundred proof. Everclear. Is yep ninety five. Well, is 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 actually one hundred and eighty proof. No, 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 no. I'm doing the math wrong. Hold on, hold on. I think I'm doing the math wrong. No, it's one ninety. One hundred and ninety. Cause you know they do the proof by uh, how much alcohol in there, and they times it by two, and it's ninety five percent alcohol, so that's one hundred and ninety. And so, either way, I I, I don't want to take them three shots with no Everclear. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. So, like I said, better three shots if your predictions don't go through, and 
our line's gonna have his and whatnot. So, Quint, what you got for me? What's, what you got? <laughs> All right, so I've been thinking long and hard about this, man. I do want to okay. see the 49ers. I do want to see the 49ers win, but I think the Chiefs gonna win. I can't count that boy Patty Mahomes out. So I'm gonna say Chiefs. And this is my prediction, man. 31 38. And I said this, it's gonna be high. It's gonna be high, but it's gonna come down to that last scope. Hell, they might even take it to overtime, to be honest. Mm. Um, I don't think it's gonna be that, yeah, that, that high is. scoring game. All right, man. Uh and I don't even want to make that prediction on the score, but I will say I think I think the Chiefs, I think the Chiefs will pull it out. Uh and I want to see Terry get another another ring, man. Shout out to Terry Braddon. Man. Oh yeah, man. As always, shout out to Terry. Old Skiggy fam. Could be ring number three or whatnot. And hopefully we can get uh Terry on the show uh one day just for a brief interview and just uh just talk about his experience. I truly, truly believe Terry should have got that uh Florida AM coaching job because he uh wanted that job, if I'm not mistaken. But it is what it is. It's time is coming because the uh credentials is only just building up by the day. So true. It is so, line. But um, I don't know who you. What, what was your uh score? My fault, Dave. Oh, I I, I didn't have a specific score. Uh, yeah, give me a score in the team win. Okay, so I would say I say twenty eight twenty one, man. Chiefs. Ooh, got two Chiefs. Okay. Both of them by seven. And I believe it's going to really come down to this in a lot of ways. I said Debo is going to be an edge factor, but really, if this man can just be, if he, if this, I truly believe this man gets over 100 yards, that means they're doing enough and they're going to win this Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to say, 28, mm -hmm. 24, 49ers. Okay. And, and Kristen, no, and I'm going to have Brock Purdy, their Super Bowl MVP. Mm. Nah, I got, I, if the 49ers do win, I got, I got Debo as uh, MVP. I got McCaffrey as MVP. And you can you can't go wrong with it. so okay so everybody pick like 49ers uh uh MVPs let's pick if well I think they're gonna more than likely try to push it for Patty so yeah, they're gonna, Pat they gonna, 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 gonna be Pat. Pat. It's gonna be Pat again or or it could be uh if he have a good game. It could Pacheco. be Pacheco. Yeah. Man, man, I don't Pacheco. Pacheco. Pacheco could score four touchdowns and Pat Mahomes have two touchdowns. They're gonna find a way to give it to Pat, bro. I don't know. All right, man. That, that, that it's just something about the NFL, man. Or whatnot. I, I could just see oh, it. Oh, Kelsey. Well, yeah, oh, Kelsey, yeah. Oh, Kelsey. Oh, Kelsey. That gives his foot boyfriend. Yeah. But oh, they're gonna double, fact, they gonna double they're gonna double Kelsey all game though. Matter, matter of fact, that, that that's a that's a good one before we uh get off the Super Bowl. Over under how many times they're gonna show Taylor Swift during the Super Bowl? The number is seven. Over or under? Over. And I'm talking about like during the game, like the over. actual game. So you're going over. I'm over. gonna say I'm gonna say right at seven. Matter of fact, seven and a half. There we go. There ain't no right there. Seven What's over or under. Under. Ooh. I'm going over. Boy, they about to <coughs> they about to bank everything on Taylor Swift, boy. You mean how many different times they gonna show her? Like, yes, how many different times they gonna show her? 
So yeah, you going it. with seven as the under? You go. I'm going with seven, right at seven. I'm going. I'm taking the over, bro. Cause there ain't no telling how many times they made sure, especially that man Travis Kelsey. Anytime he catches the ball, oh, we gonna show. Make sure you put Taylor Swift up there. I'm like, oh my God, bro. We don't care. We do not care. But nah, oh. but shit. Hey, it's a statistic though. Every time she does show up to a game, they do win. And yeah, they lost. It. No, not not necessarily. They lost. They lost a couple of games. They lost a couple, but majority of the time, which you do, majority of the time they win, yeah. But bro, it don't ever matter, bro. This is NFL, man. The man was playing boo boo through most of the time. He just started getting hot during the uh, postseason. Yeah, but shoot, that but he's a Hall of Fame uh, tight end, so I don't expect nothing less from uh, Travis. But <laughs> we spoke on Brock Purdy. Well, good luck to everybody. Everybody have a safe uh, Super Bowl. But we, like I said, we spoke on Brock Purdy and a certain somebody on the show was like, man, we got to have this on here because they was having a debate with folks. Mr. Cameron Newton. Hall of Famer? <laughs> mm. So I'm going to let the Haven explain it real quick. Man, so you can just tell the situation how we came to this topic. Man, so I, I was watching uh, on Instagram. They had a clip where he was basically saying, uh, and I may not quote this specifically right, but it was something about, man, yeah, I'm a Hall of Famer. When I came in the league, it wasn't that many me's. Now all I see is a bunch of mini me's. So uh, he basically said, man, he changed the game, man. Uh, in which we can deep dive into that, but he's basically saying, you know, based on what he brought to the game, based on uh, how he changed up uh, the QBs uh, for the for the future, which is today, you know what I'm saying? Uh, basically, man, he's the reason why we have so many mobile quarterbacks that's like, you know, tall and, and running and throwing and stuff. So, you know, let's, let's dive into it. <laughs> that's what he said. Yeah, see, yeah. man, and see, this, and then I don't even want it to come off like that, man. And I don't even want to sound like, bro, I think it's well documented, bro. I couldn't stand Cam when he was at Auburn because I'm an Alabama <laughs> fan. We ain't even got to go down that road. But I grew to love Cam in the uh, NFL, though. But what Cam is talking about is asinine. Straight. Uh, it, 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 I don't even know what. Like, bro, you had a, a good career. I believe if you play a little bit longer, more consistent, and then I would have been like, yeah, it's no, no question, especially with that MVP. That MVP holds a lot of weight <laughs> to that Hall of Fame. So if he can somehow get back into the league and just at least get back to a Pro Bowl level and just be there for a while, then I I would change my stand, but as of today, Cam Newton is not no Hall of Famer, man. It's it, 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 like, bro, I, I I don't I don't know what he'll. Yeah, I, I I just don't know, bro. He, he I because I don't, if he see this, I want to be like, what what do y'all know? I'm like, hey man, you know more football than me. I'm just gonna <laughs> keep it real, <laughs> but. Bro, I I got the eye test, <laughs> and I can I can guarantee you, like most of the Hall of Famers would just be like, no. And I know of all the people that is very very critical of the Hall of Fame, Deion Sanders, who is like, he judges the Hall of Fame more harshly than I do, and he's a Hall of Famer. He will say, "Cam, I love you, baby, but no, <laughs> I love you, don't." <laughs> That's I ain't gonna lie. This I hate that we have this conversation about this guy, man. Because I don't like to see people fail or anything like that. I want the people. I like people to succeed and everything. But that man ain't going to no Hall of Fame at all, bro. That's like saying Joe Flacco going to the Hall of Fame, even though he won the Super Bowl. That no, nah, you ain't going to no Hall of Fame, bro. Ah, listen, the MVP year. That was phenomenal. 
you going to the Super Bowl. That was phenomenal. You put in some great years on that turf, on that field. But you, it's not, it's not Hall of Fame, near Hall of Fame ready. I, so, Brinskin, I ain't even gonna lie to you. You said you made a point of if he was to get back into the league and get to a Pro Bowl level, then that would be considered as Hall of Fame. I don't even see that. I'm just being honest with you. You on mute, but yeah, yeah, I don't, uh, I don't, I don't see that either. Like him even getting back to that point, and he's not talking getting back to that level at all. Yep. Mm-hmm. Right, like, like he he is done. I mean, he had a little stint with the Patriots, and that didn't. That you saw how horrible that went. Like, like he is. If we can say anybody is washed, he's washed. He he's not coming back, bro. It's it's over with. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think he's <laughs> he's going to the college football hall of fame. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, right. You're going, you know. <laughs> But if, oh, it ain't if, no question about that. My fault, though. And, and like Brinsky's favorite quote is, "If it wasn't fifth, we would all be drunk." So, uh, if <laughs> if it wasn't he fifth, was to actually go to the Hall of Fame, he's definitely not a first ballot. Uh, but I made a post about this, and a lot of people were, you know, going back and forth about it um, on my Facebook about you know, about this man. And some people do believe he's actually a Hall of Famer. They're saying that he is a Hall of Famer, that he will go eventually. But when I do my research, man, because one of my friends was like, well, uh, he got over 100 interceptions. Well, I was like, you know, man, Warren Moon got over 200. But Warren Moon was in the league for 23 years. Cam was in the league uh, 10 to to uh, 11, was it 10 or 11? I want to say 10, <laughs> let's just keep 11, it. 11, 11. It was 11, he was there 11, he was in the league 11 years. Right. So it's like, <sighs> it's it's a sticky one, man, to be honest with you, because, uh, you know, it's so many great quarterbacks that's not in the Hall of Fame, man. Donovan McNabb is not in the Hall of Fame. Uh, Mm-hmm. Of course, Mike Vick is not in the Hall of Fame. And really, yeah. honestly, if you really want to give anybody that I changed the game status, it was really Michael Vick. Michael Vick. You know what I'm saying? Oh. Now, Donovan could run, too. You know, Donovan, Donovan yeah. had a really yeah. good long career. He too. But he was not Michael Vick. Let me know? ask you. Let me Nobody. Ask you, who, who, who would – would you put Joe Flacco in the Hall of Fame? No, exactly. I don't like how long it took you to answer that. Oh, right, right. You took it. God, you took way, way. way. No, nah, I, I wouldn't put him necessarily in the Hall of Fame. No, exactly. And he won a Super Bowl. Yeah, but that's what but, I'm saying. Uh, ain't I'm no but. At, I'm still looking at what he did outside. Of, I'm thinking like what he did outside of winning that Super Bowl. He, but he still won a Super Bowl. That's what I'm saying. That's that's the best achievement that you can get in, in as a team in the right. NFL. He won right. that. Cam Newton has not won that. He got there. He got there. He didn't win it. And lost. And flopped. Right. Mm. Bro. And never made it back. And, and, and never made it back. Come on now. He's not he's and, not going to the Hall of Fame. I'm and sorry. I feel like and I feel like you uh, discredit, discredit. Uh, I can't even get it out. Uh, discrediting. I can't even. I can't even say the word. Thank you, man. Yeah. Thank, thank, thank you, man. Tone time. Well, uh, when it comes to uh, Warren Moon, bro, Warren Moon, like we could say he had two hundred thirty-three interceptions, but he had two hundred ninety-one touchdowns. Yeah, yeah, facts. Nine-time Pro Bowler. Uh, offensive player of the year, and then we got to think about it. Warren Moon came into the league, uh, he wasn't even drafted into the league because um, Canadian football, yeah, because he should have came out in uh college. But them folks weren't trying to uh, uh get no black quarterback, which was stupid on Napal because this man is elite, then went up to uh. Canada and won all them great cups. 
or whatnot, mm-hmm. and he a Hall of Fame up there too. Warren Moon is one of the greatest quarterbacks to ever play this game. Right. Cam Cam is not on Warren Moon's level. I'm I'm sorry. I love Cam, but you gotta put some a lot a lot more respect on uh, Warren Moon's name with right. that. So and I don't even want to feel like we just even slighting Warren Warren Moon. Warren Moon is a great. Whether he's black or white, it don't matter. The man is an all-time great quarterback. So, but Cam, I, I, don't, I don't even, I don't even. My fault. Go ahead. Oh look, uh, my bad. I'm not to cut y'all. I'm looking at this stat right. Cam's last year in New England, he had more rushing touchdowns than he had passing touchdowns. He literally had. He went eight for ten. He had eight touchdowns in the in the air, ten interceptions. Right. Uh, 2,657 yards. Then rushing, he had 592 yards, 12 rushing touchdowns. <laughs> That's insane. But yeah, yeah he did have a pop of the year. Yeah, man. He's not yeah, a not he's not. Player. Good player. Mm-hmm. Excellent career. MVP. Just not a Hall of Famer. That's, it's just plain and simple with that. And you're yeah. talking about a lot of mini me's. I'm like, what what many means is he talking about? Like it's been running quarterbacks before Cam Newton even came into the league and done it at a far yeah. higher level. Can you truly call it an excellent career? <laughs> Cause I wouldn't even say an excellent career. I say a good career. And it's funny, Lamar got over six thousand yards rushing in his career so far, right? Yeah. Cam has five uh fifty six hundred and twenty eight yards in his career <laughs> in a in a 10-year career. That was a 10-year career from 2011 to 2021. So Lamar already smashed that in what? 2021 was his last year? Yep. 21. You don't feel like it was that long. He went back to Carolina. Yeah, I don't think it was that long, though. Okay. (laughs) Yeah, man. Seemed like he's been out the league a little bit longer than that, but it's been three years. I wouldn't say that long, but damn, that's crazy. I ain't know yeah, that. Yeah, I, I would never thought three years. I, I swear I thought he was in there like 20, 22. I know oh, he was last year. It's, it's 21, man. That was the last year. And that I'm back. Oh, that, you yeah, know. see, I don't like Yeah. Like, man, I'll room for him then. Uh, I'm always room for him, but I'm just saying, like, man, I don't know what. And Cam is what now? How old is Cam now? Shit, gotta be like shit. 35. He's 34. Old. He's 34 30 years old. old. Yeah. Now tell me this. Tell me this. Could y'all see from what we saw Joe Flacco do this past year? Could you see Cam Newton coming back into the league this year? And doing that. And doing something similar to what, what Flacco did. Hell no. I think no. if he no. Oh. He's a hell no. <laughs> hell no. Hell no. Hey, listen, I, I like, I, I like, and I, I like you, what Cam used, to, Cam used to be. I yeah. love what yeah. Cam yeah. used to be, yeah. but he is not that person anymore. He no. is not. True. True. Yeah, man. It, 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 his time is past, man. It's just, now I just don't. The simple fact that he said I wouldn't play for no other team. Outside of Atlanta, only because it was like family and all that, and that's where he is. I was like, I said it last week. I was like, if it was last week, I was like, hey man, you might well go ahead and enjoy retirement, boy. Cause ain't no way. I knew it was bad when Falcon fans was yeah. like, no, <laughs> Falcon fans <laughs> were saying no. That's when you know it's over, bro. That is your hometown, and people are like, "Hey, we love you, but we don't know." <laughs> I'll say this. I'll say this. Now I'm hearing about a potential Justin Fields trade, right? Now we get yeah. Justin to the A. All right, I could see him coming in taking like a mentorship role. Ain't gonna happen. Like and he could be a bit told for a far, but he won't be on the team. Bro, I'm saying that's just how they did. That's how they did Flacco. Flacco was supposed to come in and, and mentor DTR. And then DTR just, they was like, okay, let's throw him out there. Let's just, let's throw, let's throw Flacco in the game. Like, it was that bad for DTR. So it was like, you know, 
And Flacco ended up just showing up and, and doing what he needed to do to carry them into the playoffs. Yeah. I, and it ain't gonna be that situation, though. I, I, I see what Flacco did this year it was so rare. Like that, should, that it was, was so so yeah. rare. What I had hopes for him, though. I ain't gonna lie, I had hopes for him because I, I, I saw the little spurt of energy. He was getting like mm-hmm. that spurt of confidence. But hey, yeah. if I was Cam Newton, to be honest with you. When the Jets said they would sign him for a meal, and he was like a meal or something, and, and that was too that one. And he said that, that was too low. I would took the money, bro. I would have. He should have. He should have. He should have. He should have took the money, bro. Balled like, out. Right. Balled out and get more money. Exactly. Now, what if he would have balled out? But I don't. I don't see it. But I'm just that saying, what if? for football not there no more, man. And 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 what's crazy? I feel like. If Cam really want to show us something, Cam need to go to the USFL. I mean, the UFL this season. Go ball out over there. He could do that. Go, revive his career. go win a championship in the UFL or something like that, man. He still ain't like uh, gonna get him to the Hall of Fame. <laughs> I'm not yeah. saying. I'm not saying that, but I'm saying if he wants to get back to his to some type of level, you know, what yeah. I'm saying where he can be competitive in the NFL again. I don't think Kim taking three years off and coming back to the NFL and trying to trying to get signed is going – it's not going to work, man. He got to mm-hmm. get back out there and get them legs back fresh, man. He been on that podcast too long. Yeah. Yeah, and, yeah. Go ahead, Quinn, my fault. No, nah, no, nah, I was just going to elaborate on that whole little passion thing. Yeah, he don't have the passion no more to play physically, but he wants to play. You feel me? I right. think he want that money, man. I, I think, yeah, he want the money, but I feel like he want to play too, though. Like a part of him want to play, but a part of him like, I, I need some money. You don't need it, but but uh, I like Wayne said, man, too much money ain't enough money. And I don't. That's why I'm gonna say this to you fools that were saying that y'all would take a ring over this money. I don't care how good the ring look, boy. I'm taking that money. Man, <laughs> that money look too good. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Cam, man, you had you had a good career, brother. Just I don't know, man. God bless you. That's all I can tell you. And if it, if you got the opportunity to uh, be a starter in the NFL again, and it's not in Atlanta, you need to take it seriously. Because I believe you're better than some of these dudes that's out here on what not. But if Justin Fields come to Atlanta, that's that would be a big piece for them. And I can see that actually happening. But moving on. Ah, damn. What? Go ahead. Should they do the just should they go the Justin Fields route? Or should they try to get a gym in the in the draft? You can go either way. Yeah, because yeah. I put it like this: they're going to have the cap room, mm-hmm. and I, bro, you have the weapons in Atlanta. It really just comes down to just getting that quarterback. I believe if you put Justin yeah. Fields in that division, that will be a slam dunk. Yeah, that would be a slam yeah. dunk. I, I put it like this: if they can get Bryce from Carolina, <laughs> trust me, you get Bryce yeah. on Drake London and Cal mm-hmm. Pitts. And you got B. John Robinson and uh I think his name Aguilar. Yeah in the uh yeah. backfield, man. Please that man. Guy, I, I saw yeah, it really. today. It said if Justin come to Atlanta, it'd be like Michael Vick 2.0. It would yeah, really he got more really weapons. Would. Yeah. And then I just mm-hmm. don't like how they just been scheming up the offense for him. Like, bro, Justin is not no scrub, dog. And that's the thing, like, man. He's you really put, not though. You put dudes in these situations. Um, you put dudes in these situations uh with these terrible coaches that be trying to uh put they they philosophy on there. I'm like, bro, I seen Justin Fields ball, bro. I know this man can ball. It that's why I say it's literally the situation. That's why when I looked at CJ Stroud when he got drafted, I knew what C- I didn't expect CJ to play like almost at an MVP type level, but I knew CJ was in uh great shape. Because the the uh, yes, the Texans record may say something like that, but the Texans literally been putting people in there 
like taking some folks from the Patriots organization and putting them uh, up in that front office. Then you go get the best. Uh, if Dan Campbell wasn't coaching this year, this man would easily win coach of the year and D'Amico Ryan's. Then you got great coordinators. Then you already had a good team. You already had a good offensive line and all that. It's structure already set for you to come in. Right. Now you still now your confidence is just up here now. And what they gonna do? They only gonna build around that, and they got the cap space. It's so much that is built for. It, it, it's not mm-hmm. only that though, man. Chicago Bears does not have a good system for quarterbacks. Mm-hmm. They do not have a good system for quarterbacks. We saw that with Mike Trubisky. We saw that with other times. Yeah. The only, the only, even, even the time when they went to the Super Bowl, which they lost to the Indianapolis Colts in 06. Uh, yeah, man, man. Yeah. I'm just saying, man, even when they went there, they didn't have a they didn't have a superior quarterback then. Yeah. But, you know, that, but that's what I'm saying, bro. You literally. You put, you put him in that system with Atlanta with, with that cap space. And do nothing but build, bro. They gonna be successful. That letter curse might go away. <laughs> For real. Well, no. Yeah, we'll see, man. They put they putting the right guys in there, man. They putting a lot of brothers in there. So Atlanta is just looking like Atlanta right now, looking real black right now, and I love it <laughs> or whatnot. Black and what I know they 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 couldn't read, couldn't uh wait to get rid of uh Arthur Smith, bro. They were like, bro, this boy is trash as a coach. Know. Yeah, so man, man you put trash. Dan, Dan, Dan Quinn was trash. Right. Like, now what well, Dan got him to a Super Bowl, but Dan had, Dan got had to a Super Bowl and lost had one of the largest com- comebacks in the Super Bowl history. The worst Super Bowl, Super Bowl the worst. Worst. all time. The worst. The worst. Come no, on, but, but 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 that's the thing, man. That, that, that you can out coach yourself sometimes because literally they were supposed to win that. It was a win win for me, regardless, because I said. <laughs> If the Patriots win, that means Tom got another one, Gronk and them got another. But if Atlanta win, I get to go to go to the parade because it's right down the road. Julio yeah. got a ring and all that. That's probably the only thing I'm mad about with the Falcons. And I try to let Falcon fans know constantly that y'all ruined my dude Julio Jones from getting a Super Bowl ring. And I still don't understand how you throw the ball to him four times. Four times. That was that. Matt Ryan just pissed me off so bad. Like, bro, you had the greatest wide receiver of this generation. It's debatable between him and A.B., but you can't go wrong with either one. But, bro, you had that, man, and you barely throwing him the ball, and he's still out there balling with these crazy stats. Imagine if you really threw him the ball, like Ben Rosberg was throwing the ball to Antonio Brown. Right. Antonio Brown saved Ben Rosberg's career. Yeah, in well, a lot of ways, which folks don't want to uh talk about. Yeah, but, I don't want to talk about that. But we'll we'll get on that one of these days when we just yeah, start we, talking we, about the game. We, we can go on and on about that because I'm man, right there with you. I'm right there with yeah, you. Man, if folks really want to talk, talk that talk. But oh well. MLB the show 2024 Negro League edition. This is just some. I seen I sent it to the Haven early. I'm in the uh, I think I yeah, I posted it in the group too. But uh I, I know I talked to the Haven about it earlier. Um uh, I don't even care. I'm not even here to talk about the game. I just like how they um uh, with the uh box and the hat that come with it. The hat clean, Quint. I don't know if you've seen the hat. I seen it, I seen it. Well, nice I was like, Hey, you know, I, I got an extensive hat collection, bro. Yep. And I said, I said, I, I wasn't going to see that's how they're going to get me to buy the game just to just to get just the hat to get and the, the collector's <laughs> and, and the collector's edition. I said, that's how they're going to get me. I'm saying, ooh, because I was just going to wait. Because I said, I need to see what y'all doing with the game. The game need to be different for me. But I was like, y'all going to get me with that. They're going to get you with the knee. Well, or I may, or or I may just buy the game or well, buy the collector's edition. No, no, no. I could sell the game because I know it's going to be on Game Pass. We'll see. I don't want to tell my tricks or whatnot. Well, but, I'm, I'm going to get it. Yeah. I got it. But, yeah. 
I think that's uh really dope how they uh put that out there, man. That 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 was really fire. And <coughs> and it's just like you just don't have a game, you literally had that collector's edition or whatnot. And I know a lot of black people would love to buy that Negro League edition. And I said I want to make my way up to uh, Kansas City to uh, go see the Negro Leagues Hall of Fame or whatnot. Because I learned a lot from that game last year about some players that I never even heard of. And that just lets me know, like, bro, it's so much history. Like, like we can just – I just love history, period. History always been my favorite subject. And I just – like, how I think I know it all. And then out of nowhere, bam, I ain't never heard of this guy. Like, who is this guy? Wouldn't that so? What's y'all thoughts on? To be honest, it's a great thing. Uh, I like how they sh- they uh, shine the light on the the black newspapers that came out back in the day. You know, basically saying that if the black newspaper newspapers didn't exist, then the Negro leagues w- would be a, wouldn't even be a part of history. So I, I like how they shine the light on that. But yeah, man, shoot, the game is gonna go crazy. Of course, the fitted hat is gonna go crazy. Uh, I'm not, I'm not a fan of wearing something that everybody got, but I gotta get that hat. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, I I think it's an overall good thing, man. I, it's a good thing for the Negro leagues, and it's a good thing for shoot black people in general. So I salute to that game. Yeah, salute to MLB the show this year, man. They're doing what they need to do to keep to keep it, uh, you know, pretty much new and fresh, you know, with these modes and hopefully, uh, you know, because we talked about this last week, you know, they got to do something a little bit different, man, uh, to keep us, you know, wanting to buy the game every year. So this was a great addition, you know what I'm saying, especially with like the the limited edition hats. And stuff like that, man, to uh commemorate the Negro League. It's really dope, man. So looking forward to the game dropping. Oh yeah. So shout out to them doing that and all that. So got this topic right here, man. The Hall of Famer, one of the best college, not why I say college. One of the best women basketball players to ever live, Cheryl Swoops, has some comments about Miss Caitlin Clark and Miss Angel Reese. Oh. And to paraphrase everything, I, 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 the first one I wanted to talk about was like literally uh, both of them. It's like, she said uh Kaylin would uh do good in the uh, WNBA. She just don't believe that uh I think she said not translate easy to the uh WNBA or she's not gonna get that many shots like that. And I was just like mm, I don't know or whatnot, but she was I for the most part agree with some of what she was saying. But um, the Angel Reese stuff was like spot on because I believe that she her game really has to develop in a lot of ways, which I felt like uh, from what I've been seeing, like you can tell that she's been working on her game a lot this year. And I like what I'm seeing. And she like more aggressive, especially with uh, – bigger competition so i still believe she got a lot more work to do but i'm loving what i'm seeing right now so we're just gonna speak on the first part how y'all think they're gonna uh transition to the um wnba what are y'all thoughts well uh, go go ahead. Ahead. no you can go first uh, uh to be honest with you I think it's going to translate well in the NBA, man. Like you said, Angel Reese does has a lot of development to do, but, you know, she's of good quality, and you can tell that by how she plays. And so I feel like she has enough to make it to that next level, that next tier. 
Uh, now, Caitlin, Caitlin might be the <laughs> the next it factor if she, you know, if she does, you know, stays consistent with what she's doing. Uh, I feel like, to be honest with you, those uh, she's gonna break some records, and I feel like that she's gonna easily break some records, and because. We have not seen anyone like that, like her before. <laughs> to be honest with you, she is like, uh, I, I wouldn't put her on the magnitude of Michael Jordan, but she's going to be that that it person when she gets there to that next level. And they're going to be like, oh, man. And they're going to come up with game plans in order to stop her because they don't have none right now. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, um, I think it's going to be hard to stop a shooter. And I think she is the Steph Curry of women's basketball. I think she is going to come in, change the game. We're going to see, and not to take away from some of these other shooters, because I I seen that one girl, man, uh, in that in that WNBA All Star game or whatever competition. With boy, she was hitting all them threes, man. I think she only missed like one. Then she like, I want to go against Curry, whatever. But she ain't Caitlin. Caitlin is such a clutch shooter. Clutch. It is insane. And uh one thing about Angel Reese's game, when she gets into the league, she's going to have to get a little more physical. She's gonna be going against cats like Brittany Griner, and mm-hmm. you know, she's gonna be going against some of the best of the best. Angel Wilson, yes. uh, Leah Boston. Yes. Yes. She's gonna be going against some heavy hitters. And uh she was she's been you know she's been dominating i mean she dropped down a little bit in her point production she was a 23 point per game uh score last season now she's at 19 points per game i think that has a little bit to do with her focus um i don't think she's as focused and as zoned in as she was last year she's not as hungry as she was last year um But I will say this, man, in comparison to the two, I think who's going to come out and make an immediate impact right off the bat is definitely going to be Caitlin Clark. I don't really agree with uh, the H-Town legend, uh, Cheryl Swoops, on that one uh, when it comes to Caitlin, man. I think Caitlin, she's a shooter, is going to show. She's going to prove everybody wrong, man, Uh, all the doubters wrong, because she's an incredible shooter. And she's going to make an immediate impact on whatever team she goes to. Man, I don't disagree with you at all, man. To be honest with you, like, you, you hit the nail right right on it. But when you said uh, Steph Curry of the WNBA, I can really see that for her, bro. Because what sharpshooter you know, and I'm not taking away from anybody else, like Brisky said, but what sharpshooter you seen like that in the NBA? None. None. Ah, sharpshooter. Sharp shooter. Yeah. Hey, that's a good point. But hey, look, all I'm saying is, man, she's gonna be a generational talent and she's going to show break records and she's gonna show people uh she's gonna create a new path like Curry created a new path with the threes. A lot of people were shooting threes like that until until Curry started hitting them, but Splash Brothers, you feel me? So, yeah, so. I feel like she's gonna do that for the NBA, WNBA, and she's gonna really change change that, but change that dynamic. But when it comes to when it comes to Andrew Reese, you said she has to get a little bit more aggressive, uh, especially when coming into the league. I agree with that, but I think that's gonna happen before she comes into the league, because like like we said, she's still developing, and she's it's a lot of distractions for her right now, especially like media wise. And stuff like that, you could tell. <coughs> but I think ultimately she's gonna come out of that. She might need to change positions too, man. Could that's possibly she could go to the foe. She could, she could. Mm-hmm. She's like six three, you know. She's gonna, she's probably gonna have to switch positions, bro. And uh, well, she or she just gonna have to fight her way and fight her way. Shot. She's gonna need a better shot. Uh, she's yeah. great in the uh in the post yeah um well as far as against her collegiate uh counterparts yeah but as far as how that's gonna translate in the wnba man it's gonna be kind of rough and tough for that girl 
I can see Fresh that. coming right out. But Caitlin. You know, I got the uh clip right here, so I'm gonna uh play it real quick so people can get the full context. I don't wanna mess up her words. Huh? I think Angel will eventually be a good pro. I don't think Angel will come into the league immediately and dominate the way people think she will. And I say that for people who have never watched a WNBA game. It's good. Like there's talent. Like these women can play. And because there are very few roster spots. Like it's a real job. So people look at new players coming in, whether that's out of college, players who've been overseas, mm -hmm. and they look at that and say, oh, you trying to come take my job? Like, no, nah, it's not going to be that easy. So will Caitlin Clark be a good pro? Absolutely. Will Caitlin Clark come into the WNBA and do what she's doing right now? Immediately? Absolutely not. Not going to happen. Okay. Not on the right team? So, yeah. Like, she basically said she's going to come in and be a good pro, but she's just saying, like, immediately, absolutely not. I don't know. I think I it's going to be immediately. Yeah, I think it's going to be immediately, yeah, too. Yeah, yeah I think it's going to be immediately. Then you add in her with Aaliyah Boston. <laughs> I was like, mm. I was like, hey, man. <laughs> That's, that's if she, that's, that's if she, they on the same team, though. No, I think that, she didn't the, want the to people, the people had the number bus. one pick in the draft. I think she didn't want to throw Angel under the bus without including Caitlin. Yeah, I think I think that's what that was. It was okay. I don't want to just say. What? Well, they they asked her, they asked her the question in in the in the interview, the whole interview. They asked her the yeah. question. They, they asked, you know, how you feel about Caitlin? How you feel about Angel? They asked about that. Man, Angel, to be honest with you, like we all have said, man, Angel, Angel's going to get there, but Caitlin's going to get there a lot quicker, you know, mm -hmm. as far as skill level. You feel me? Yeah. Yeah, man, it, it, it is just too natural for her, man. That was like, you see, you can just tell who watch basketball games and whatnot. That was I said, if you ask, like, who is really the better player and somebody say Angel is better than Caitlin, I, I promise you right there, I know you don't know the game of basketball you're, or you just ain't watching the game. Like this ain't even a black white thing, man. It's just like, who is literally the better basketball player? Caitlin is easily the better basketball player and yeah. is not even close <laughs> in a lot of ways. We want to be truly honest. Cause I'm like, I don't know nobody on Iowa. Cause if you put Caitlin like on, if Caitlin <coughs> played on, like a Connecticut or, or, or Arizona, Arizona or yeah. Stanford or something like that with better uh, players around her, man, ain't no telling how far they will go, man. Ain't no telling how far they will go for right. real. Matter of fact, UConn. yeah, I said, uh, you can matter of fact, put on South Carolina. Let's see how South Carolina oh, yeah. already Stanford good, Carolina, yeah. man, man. Come on now. Like, regardless of what roster that she be on, she is literally the best. <laughs> she is that good, man. But it was like a, a second part to uh, to that um, clip, and I'm going to play uh, this second one, and it'll be the last one. This isn't just for Caitlin, but you asked me about Caitlin. If you're going to break a record, to me, if it's legitimate, you have to break that record in the same amount of time that that player set it. Okay. In, right. So if if Kelsey Plum set that record in four years, mm -hmm. well, Caitlin should have broke that record in four years. But because there's a COVID year, and then there's another year. You know what I mean? So she's already had an extra year to break that record. So is it truly a broken record? I don't you, know. you think you think exactly how I I don't I think. think so, but yeah, that'll go in the record books as Caitlin Clark is the all time whatever it is. I don't even know what the number is, but that's the way it'll be. And and I don't think it should be. And and, and the sad part is that record would never be broke because no one There'll never be another COVID year. Well, COVID year. Well, you not, there's right? never gonna be a, probably another five or six years you can play in college sports. Yeah. Right? And that's the that's <clears> the thing about it, right? Like 
it should be a whole separate entity, right? Like this record is this record yeah. because of five years or it has a fifth year. So whoever's playing five years, y'all in this lane, right? The re it's not, normal is here. Yeah, and it's not to take anything away from what she's done. But if you're talking about breaking records, then this is... If this player did it in this amount of time, then you should do it in that same amount of time. So that's my thought on that. But this, this is not NBA, folks. We're not talking about NBA where you, you play 10 years and I played 20 years. That's not the same. This is, we can only play four years, right? If we there five years, goddammit, we redshirted. Well, we're not allowed to play. Yeah, and there's no still in the COVID yeah. year. All COVID year, I get to play different. and like, yeah. oh, COVID happened. I'm going to come back next year and I'm the well, same breed. The <laughs> like, what? But for you average 35 last year. <laughs> I'm going to average 35 again. <laughs> because to your point, here's the other thing. So she can come back another year. She See, has another year where she can come back. She doesn't have to go. Like she. So what year live. is this for her? So this is her. This is her. She's a senior. She's a senior, but sh I, think, I think her COVID year was last year or this year. I don't know. She Stupid. Stupid and give the ring is stupid as hell for for saying for grill. I think you think how I think. Man, fuck all that, man. Look, man. The, and see, bro, I, I, I don't even want to disrespect uh Cheryl Swoops like that because I love her. We all do. Yeah. But this is just like misinformation that you just throwing out. Like, come on now. Yeah, that's you talking about in that amount of time, she's gonna break it way before like I'm I don't know what you thinking. She's not taking no 40 shots a game <coughs> or whatnot. I've i got you had the stats before we even uh got up here. Like uh it was like averaging like 19, 19, maybe 19 over shots per game. That's how much she averaged. Uh, unless she, she's talking about Soup free throw. Said, Go ahead. Sue said 40. She's averaging yeah. 40 shots a game. I'm like, bro, what? Yeah, and I'm just like, what are you talking about? She she didn't have no COVID year or whatnot. She literally yeah. came in after, like, I ain't going to say, like, after COVID, but that 2020 season when they had to cancel it, she came in the very next year as a freshman. Now, but she come back next year. 2021. She's, Four years in 2020, 2020, 2021. This is a senior year, and I'm just like, this is literally about to be her last year. She's right. not coming back, she's going to the WNBA, it's, it's without question. And where she's lined up with, like how the uh, WNBA already lined up, you know, who has the pits in the uh, WNBA draft, and the Fever have the number one pick, which they have Aaliyah Boston already. So you add her to the roster with a Leah Boston. That, that it's about to go crazy in Indiana. Oh, it's about to go crazy. Yeah. So yeah, I don't know yeah. what she was talking about. It, now that just sounded like pure hate. I don't know what like it's hate, bro. It's it's kind of like the NBA. You know, you got you got some of the older players hating on the younger generation. Hmm. But I mean, it's, it's just hate. The older generations don't hate on the younger generation, and that's. <laughs> That's unfortunate. Yeah, man. I, I I just thought that was like, come on now. She should have. Uh, if you when it comes to stuff like that, you know that's gonna uh, make his rounds or whatnot. Like, I would have just did a quick fat check real quick. Like the way she was talking, <laughs> she was talking like this girl just like old, old in uh, college, just playing basketball. Say she's she just. Been <laughs> you said she tw the girl is 22. Like she is literally is two, bro. this is her. She's a true senior, not oh, even rare, true, true senior. And she's not about to use her. Now she come back next year, then you can use that argument because that's her COVID year. But she is not coming back. Win, lose, or draw. Depending on how much she making off the NIL money, though. She, she is might. not. Nah, she, come back. she is not coming back. back. She is going to be the number one pick in the WNBA draft and the team that she's lined up with yeah. and she the gonna, player that she's going to be lined up with, she's going to want to play. I will be very, very shocked if she come back. Now, you yeah, like what you were saying with that NIL, it does help yeah. help them women more than it helps the uh, guys yeah. if, if yeah. you're one of them top-tier players or whatnot. But 
the men would have were going because I remember having this argument with uh my yeah. cousin. I was like, you because he's an Ohio State fan, he thinking Marvin Harrison Jr. was coming back. Like that boy about to go get this money. You you can right. go ahead and kill some Christmas boy. He is not coming back to Ohio State. Just enjoy him while you can. He's he's done. He's gone. I now agree, you want to use that for the uh women's game. That that is an argument. I so, think she's gonna make more money in the WNBA than she would the NIL deal, just because of her talent alone. And how, how yeah, they probably gonna get what in endorsements. Yeah, 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 with the endorsements and all that. So I don't know what you're making NIL wise. Let me look it up. Even 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 so, did they just average out NIL? They ain't like a known bet. They just like that. Just. And it's nothing over that. When, that's why when I see like certain folks talking about, oh man, they getting like they offer this person a twenty one million dollar uh, nil deal. I'm like, bro, if you look at it, the number it's one like, guy. The, go ahead. It says seven hundred thirty nine thousand. It's Kaylin Clark's nil. Yeah, she she should make that endorsement. Yeah, she, she she and make, and, and more than that, she's gonna yeah, sign with like yeah. Nike or Jordan or somebody, and she's gonna. Probably make that off just signing there. Then you got her WNBA contract. Then you're gonna yeah. have other endorsements. And man, it's 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 so much more, man. Right. Like I know she's from Iowa, but trust me, she's getting out of Iowa, bro. She's about to go to <laughs> the fever and all that. But that's what I'm saying, bro. When you hear like these outrageous NIL deals that folks want to say, oh, he signed for that 21 million dollar NIL deal. Bronny James, if I'm not mistaken, it's not even at six million. If nobody's going to make over Bronny just off the name because he's LeBron James' son, right. if they say anybody else made higher than that, that is that is just not good reporting. Do your own Shadur. research because you're not going to do that. That Shadur, Shadur got a good deal too, huh? Shadur got a good Shadur. deal too, and Shadur, that's what I'm saying. But nobody's higher than Bronny. That's yeah, the only nobody, thing I'm saying. Yeah. So if yeah, anybody man. say they're higher than Bronny, they're lying to you because I'm telling you, like, them boys are not making the money that you guys think they are. They are making money, but they're not making the money money that they could make in these leagues that they right, can go right, to. Right, 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 right. Like, we got to uh, stop that. But uh, Miss Swoops, I'm sorry, but that that I, I highly, highly disagree with you on that. And it sounds like a little hate. And you call women games. That 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 what makes it worse. You call <laughs> women games, and I know you are. I know you are well prepared when you go into these games. When you call in these games, so we need to go on here and stop that. Cut that. Uh, I don't, I I just don't know, man. It's just like it's just weird, bro. It's just like weird. I couldn't wait to talk about this topic because I couldn't believe that Ashley came out her mouth. She knows the game too. <laughs> she knows the game, bro. Like, what are you talking about? Like, come on, we all have eyes. Like, the eye test don't lie, bro. We know what we see. So, yeah, man. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, man. <laughs> well, it look like, well, it look like, well. We're gonna have a short night tonight, gentlemen. Look, everybody got everything they want to talk about out tonight. Um I'm trying to think, man. Yeah. <coughs> I think we I think we done hit everything, hit the nail yeah, on everything, man. For real, for real. Yeah, I don't have a top five. We did, man. I well, don't have no top five, well, yeah, man, we'll have some because I know we're gonna be plenty to talk about next week with the uh Super Bowl, the MVP, or whatnot. Now I'm telling you, man, and one thing I want to uh get off, pause. Um, uh, Brock Purdy, if what Cam said, Cam need to leave that subject alone, man, because Brock yeah. is literally like, bro, he has proven. <laughs> What he can do, man. It's just like I'm like, hey, bro. If he wins the Super Bowl and you come out and say anything, especially if he wins Super Bowl MVP, if you say, oh, he's still the tenth best player, like, bro, you gonna sound. It's basically you gonna sound ridiculous. And I'm saying, bro, Cam, um, Cam New talking about Brock Purdy. 
Oh yeah, Cam, Cam Newton ain't even know how to fight him, so yeah. we ain't even about to talk about man, it. Don't do it <laughs> like that. But all I don't think I know. I don't, I don't get the Brock Purdy hate, man. I don't, I don't get know. it either, bro. I just, I just, I just know it, if Brock Purdy hold up that trophy, that's literally the ultimate. <laughs> like you can say whatever you want about me, I just hold up the trophy and look at the camera. Now I'm I'm not a fan of Brock. I'm I'm not the big his biggest fan, like as far as Brock huh. Purdy goes, but. Uh, see, he did his thing this year. I can't even, mm-hmm. can't even hold it. He did his thing this year. You know, somebody got to throw him the ball. So you know, I think the thing that uh that that made me uh start to like Brock Purdy a lot more because I was like, mm, yeah, I'm not man. Brock ain't really all that man. I'm just like, yeah. Uh, but that's how you look down on a lot of these guys that were drafted late. Well, at least at the quarterback position, but. The thing I like about Brock, man, uh, I'm not saying that he is Tom Brady at all, but that's how basically Tom was. Tom came in, sits round 199 pick, like just came in there, just did his job or whatnot. And if you like ask those guys like the Ty Laws, Richard Seymour, Teddy Bruski, uh, uh uh branches um just all those guys core dealings like bro yeah. when they speak on tom brady they love tom brady like yeah. they love that man like they don't even call him tom they say tommy like that 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 is my guy or whatnot and tom used to get a lot of that hate too but it changed over time because it's just like bro them guys in the locker room know him and like bro he's a dog well, not and, even that, but he's produced, man. He's and and produced. he produced, yeah. and he and he won early in his career. Now, I'm not saying Brock can Brock can, bro. Anybody can wish they can have a uh, life that Tom Brady had. Star yeah. quarterback, supermodel wife, all that, bro. That is like <laughs> the all American dream, like <laughs> compared. To, <laughs> well, like, bro, it, it really is though. But I, I'm like. I Go ahead, Make bro, all the bro. money, but but on, my fault. The only thing I'm saying, like compared to him, like bro, he just went in there, put in the work, uh, became successful. <laughs> like bro, he he doesn't have the strongest on. He's not the most accurate and all that. But the one thing he is is the most consistent, and he has that dog that no one like. He is psycho Tom, bro. I have literally seen. That's why, I like, I don't understand why we keep putting Pat Mahomes in this conversation. Pat can win Sunday. Pat, it, Tom Brady is in a different stratosphere. Pat is on his way up, but Tom Brady is by himself. He yeah, has separated he himself from yeah. everybody in the NFL. All the quarterbacks, a- everybody. Yeah, you're right. I agree with you wholeheartedly, man. But mm-hmm. I think when it comes down to Brock Purdy, you know, like you said, you get some of these quarterbacks uh, that's drafted late. And they, but they put in the best situation, and he was Forty uh, ers was like the perfect system for him. I don't see him doing this with another team at all. But it, or, but, or, it, but but that system for him fits him, and he's balling out. And if he continues to play in that system, he he can continue showing. You know, just keep the haters coming. You feel me? They might change it. later on, like they did with Tom Brady. You know, but. To he, he just he's young he, he got time but going to back to what you said about Pat Mahomes and the level that he's on with Brady uh he's not on, even on that level he's not he he's he's going towards that way and I can see one day he gets there but I don't see it right I just don't see it right now mm-hmm. yeah man yes I'm getting an echo I don't hear no echo. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's it's gone now. I uh, had to mute the Havens for some odd uh, reason, but uh, yeah, you good? Though. I'm about to unmute it, but uh, yeah, man, we're gonna see and whatnot. But before we close it, I did one. Tomorrow is National Signing Day, so a bunch of young men are going to be signing that letter of intent to go to college free ride so as always man i just want 
to congratulate those guys that put in that work. They had an the opportunity to do that and to uh, even make it that far, man. And a lot of you guys are not going to make it to the uh, NFL, but I want y'all to take like full advantage of that free ride. Like if you just be good in college or whatnot, if you can, if you can make it to the next level, that's cool. But man, take full advantage of that free ride and get that degree and change your uh, whole family to directory or whatnot, especially for uh, young black boys, man. Just just kill a lot of these uh, generational curses or not and just become great family, man, or just good people in society, man. So always happy about this time of the year. Yeah, I don't care if they sign with Tuskegee, Alabama, or Auburn, Texas. It doesn't matter. You're going to school for free. Take full advantage of it. Network, get opportunities. Just, just it's just a whole nother world, man. So congratulations to you guys. Congrats, congrats. And as always, how we end the show, everybody, shout out. They uh Instagrams and all that good stuff. I'm gonna start with you, Quint, and then we're gonna go to the Haven Dan myself, and we're gonna close it out. All right, man. It's your boy QG from the four six. Mm. Uh, you can follow me on IG QG underscore sophisticated here all day, all week, all month, all year. DJ Ghost Play though, man. You already know what it is, man. Sean Love, every week, man. We doing this thing, man. We coming back with another hit. You already know what's up, man. Big salute. You on mute, man. You on mute. Tripping, tripping, tripping. Of all the people. I was like, on oh, mute, man. I can hear myself. And I was like, come on, bro. Like, like <laughs> I, I, I had a I had a slow moment right there. But as always, I'm Brinsky Shaw for the Sharp Shooters Podcast. And I appreciate my guys always every week just showing up, just always showing love. Like I tell them all the time. When it gets to that point, I can actually do something big for them. I will shout out to Arlen. Couldn't make it tonight, preparing for a big case. Or what that so hopefully uh not even hopefully we're gonna do in the uh long run definitely gonna be especially during the NBA time like oh, some lives just just going live just talking basketball it ain't even gonna be the show but just getting on there and just hearing some of these guys bad takes seeing the comment session going crazy folks talking crazy man it's gonna be wild I can already see it coming man and the Haven acting like an animal. <laughs> just, man, just, I, I just see it coming, man. I just see it coming, bro. The Texas boy. <laughs> oh, we ain't going to be here. One thing for sure, we ain't about to hit no rockets. Uh, but, <laughs> we ain't hit no rockets. And uh, leave, leave my team alone, man. We just hey, got hey. Stephen Adams. <laughs> hey. I got Stephen Adams? Yeah, they just got Stephen Adams, bro. Just got him. <laughs> Didn't didn't Steven Adams get traded to uh Miami? Uh-uh. Yeah. Uh-uh. Yes, he did. Victor Oladipo. No, Vic. Vic got traded. Vic got traded up from there. But no, no he, they traded for Steven Adams. <laughs> bro, I'm telling you, bro, y'all getting y'all getting stuff well, wrong, he, man. Hey, he didn't play, he didn't play for the Heat. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I'm saying he might just got traded from the Heat. Nah, Steven. No, Vic played Steven. for Houston. Steve Vic. played for the Grizzlies before he played. Yeah, he played for the Grizzlies, Steve and then he, for, for and the he Grizzlies. got traded for uh Victor Oladipo, if I ain't mistaken. And and uh no. three in three picks. Nah, Steve Adams played for Houston now, bro. Memphis is trading Stephen. Yep, this Woj. Yep. Well, Victor, hold on. Victor was playing for the Rockets. I did not know that. Yeah, yeah Victor was with the Rockets. Yeah, yeah I thought Victor was with uh Miami. That's why when I no, seen no. it, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, he left there and went to the Rockets. What?
Whew, well, I'm glad I ain't bet no money with nobody, but I would have lost that money quick. I, I know my team. <laughs> yeah. And, and look, he got traded for three picks, though, man. Three uh draft picks. Yeah. Yeah, because they got a lot of draft picks, dog. Yep, uh, the two two twenty twenty four yeah. second round picks and one twenty twenty five second round pick. Yeah, but I forgot I was even closing this out. But yeah, I appreciate y'all putting the information out there. Thank you. Yeah, but uh, yeah, man, I I spent big things with the pod. We're on the road to five hundred subs now. Hopefully we get that super quickly and then we be on the road six and thousand and million, whatever. But like I always say, man, we I'm trying to do uh partnerships with a lot of folks, uh interviews coming soon. And I know I've been saying it, I've been saying it, I've been saying it, but still was trying to get some stuff in order for uh some big time guys and definitely got some people in the works. So it's gonna be a lot of folks hating, a lot of folks hating, man. Or oh, nothing. I expect big things in the future with this pod, trying to hit a lot of goals with it. But as always, man, appreciate you guys. Appreciate uh Arlon since he ain't here. Uh appreciate all the uh subscribers, appreciate my wife, uh, my biggest supporter, uh, of the pod, even my baby girl, Justice, she sleep. Hopefully, <laughs> but uh, yeah, man, as always, and uh, fans out there and new fans that's gonna come in. So, as always, appreciate y'all, all that good stuff, and you know how we're gonna lead off. Shout out to Tuskegee, Alabama, and bro, Shout damn time, AM University. Roll damn tight in F A and M.